For more than 50 years, the Navy has used steam to launch aircraft from carriers. In addition to catapults, the launcher commodity also includes catapult control stations and jet blast deflectors. The station, known as the Bubble or the Integrated Catapult Control System or the ICCS, is situated on carrier flight decks. For intercommunication during each airplane takeoff, it integrates the currently operating remote stations. Additionally, this is the location with the most breathtaking view where a great deal of work is done. It is amazing how these ships can launch and land aircraft in such a small area. Hey there! Welcome to another episode of High Technology. If you are new to this channel, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you would get updated when another mind-blowing video like this comes up. Now let's take a closer look inside the smallest room on the dangerous flight deck of an aircraft carrier. Modern US Navy aircraft carriers employ the integrated catapult control system which was deployed across the fleet in 1975. During carrier launch, Launches the station, also referred to as the bubble, enables greater safety and effectiveness. It serves as the main control point for the catapult system which eliminates the need for numerous remote stations and intercommunications during each plane launch. When not in use, the ICCS is an enclosure that may be retracted into the deck. It manages the operation of two nearby catapults and houses both the catapult officer control console and the monitor control console. The ICCS is connected to the remote panels for individual catapults by sound-powered phones and a network of indicator lights. The station enables the launch of carriers with more efficiency and safety. It functions as the brain of the catapult control system, eliminating the requirement for numerous distant stations and intercommunications required for each takeoff of an airplane. The Navy officer in the bubble has a lot of responsibility because even a small error or a breakdown in communication might cause an accident. Before launching, the sailor in the bubble does safety checks. Once inside the bubble, he exists examines the winds, confirms that the path is clear, and keeps an eye on the board in front of him. He turns to face the pilot just before takeoff. The takeoff will be delayed if the pilot moves his head or turns off his light when taking off at night. The central charging panel beneath the deck and the ICCS on the deck each have a significant percentage of the ICCS controls. The ICCS which houses both the monitor control console and the catapult officer control console is in charge of overseeing the operation of two adjacent catapults. During normal catapult operations, the catapult is operated from inside the ICCS by the shooter with coordination from the ICCS operator. The shooter will set the rate at which the catapult's steam launch valves open and will receive confirmation from the ICCS operator as to a confirmation from below decks personnel. Monitoring topside personnel, the shooter will ensure a safe launching environment before hitting fire and launching the aircraft. In a crisis, the ICCS duties can be transferred to the central charging panel or the emergency deck edge control panel and the catapult officer can take care of overseeing deck operations. The catapult officer control console, the monitor control console, and the central charging panel are used in tandem to control the catapult's operations. The control console includes a wraparound design for user comfort. Separate control panels for each of the two catapults controlled by the console are positioned on the side of the console that is closer to the commanded catapult. Status indicators, light switch units for the various catapult operation stages, a switch to launch the nose gear, readouts for the manual aircraft data input system, array switches, and a console to display the position of the capacitor selector valve are all included on the operating panels. These parts enable the operator to control the catapult during a typical launch cycle. The Nimitz class carriers are equipped with an ancient remote stations that are used to operate the catapults on older carriers, so it is not necessary to use the bubble to launch a catapult. These distant stations therefore aid the operator operation even if the bubble is not used to launch an aircraft. A plane can be launched from one of an aircraft carrier's four catapults every 20 seconds or so. Each catapult has a huge piston underneath the deck and is about 300 feet long. The aircraft's nose gear is engaged by a tiny device that is only slightly larger than the deck. Two rows of slotted cylindrical pipes line the catapults through which is placed below the flight deck. When it's time for the planes to take off, the flight deck's aircraft handlers will lead the aircraft onto the catapult and attach the catapult to the aircraft's nose gear. Each aircraft's nose gear has a T-bar attached to it that is used to drag the aircraft down the catapult. A shuttle that extends from the flight deck is connected to a bar on the aircraft's nose gear that connects to two pistons in the through. A holdback mechanism which is connected to the nose gear and given tension keeps the aircraft in position. The pilot puts all of the aircraft's engines up to full power after finishing the final of several checks. The airplane accelerates from 0 to 160 knots in less than 2 seconds 
after the catapult is deployed once the engines have reached their full power. In response to a signal from the flight deck based catapult safety observer, steam is introduced into the catapult by opening the launching valve assembly. How long the valves are left open depends on the weight of the aircraft and the wind speed over the deck. When the holdback is released, the aircraft is propelled along the 300 foot deck by the shuttle's pistons. A jet that weighs 60,000 pounds can achieve speeds of more than 150 miles per hour in less than 2 seconds. Only aircraft carriers of the Nimitz class are outfitted with the bubble, which may be retracted onto the flight deck. The first bubble is between the first and second catapults on the carrier's starboard side and the second bubble is to the left of catapult number 4 on the carrier's port side. Battle conditions may make it necessary to keep the catapults in ready condition. With the pistons in battery position and aircraft positioned on the catapults, under these circumstances the water brake pumps must be kept operating, and all personnel must remain at their proper stations prepared to launch at very short notice. Where the ICCS is the primary mode of controlling fixed-wing aircraft launching operations, the following procedures apply. As the ship approaches the launch course, the air officer monitors the wind repeater and keeps the launching officers advised of the relative wind velocity. When permission to launch aircraft is received from the bridge, a final check must be made to ensure relative wind is within the limits prescribed in the applicable launching bulletin. This is accomplished before changing the rotating beacons from red to green, which lights the pry fly go light on the catapult officer's ICCS console, thereby clearing the launching officers to begin launching. The following steps must be completed before the launching officers assumes control of the aircraft. Before aircraft tension, the hookup petty officer performs the following. Step 1 ensures the appropriate jet blast deflectors are raised. Step 2 supervises the attachment of the holdback to aircraft. Step 3 checks the catapult area forward. And Step 4 gives the tension signal to the director. The catapult director performs the following. Step 1 is to check the catapult area forward. Step 2 is to ensure that the appropriate jet blast deflectors are raised and that all personnel are clear of the jet blast and prop wash. Step 3 signals the launching officer in the ICCS to take tension while signaling the pilot to release brakes. The pilot in turn applies power as specified in the NAROPS manual for that type of aircraft. Step 4 after the aircraft is tensioned on the catapult signals the pilot if required to raise the aircraft launch bar. And step number 5 turn the aircraft over to the ICCS deck signal lights. If there is any doubt in the mind of the hookup petty officer, director, or squadron aircraft inspector as to satisfactory hookup or aircraft configuration, he or she must indicate to the catapult safety observer by initiating a crossed arm suspend signal in the day or a horizontal wand movement in the night. The catapult safety observer then signals suspend to the launching officer in the ICCS. But how big is the defense bubble around an aircraft carrier? Could a drone swarm get close enough to the disrupt flight operations? Not very likely. Aircraft carrier strike groups are protected by the Aegis weapon control system. Aegis components are deployed and coordinated across the various ships that make up the strike group. This system can see, track, and defend against multiple threats up to 100 nautical miles away. Maybe further. You can bet that if there is a vessel within that range, then the combat information center on board the aircraft carrier knows about it, whether it's a Chinese carrier or a local fishing boat. Now, assume that the carrier is out at sea when this drone swarm attacks. One would further have to assume that it was launched from a mothership somewhere in the 100 mile radius, more probably within a 10 mile or closer radius, so the strike force is already monitoring that mothership. What do you think about this feature? Share your thoughts in the comments down below. That would be a wrap for today's video. We hope this has been amusing to you. If you enjoyed watching, give this a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button together with the notification bell so you won't miss a thing. This has been High Technology serving you the best and cutting edge contents on the highest form of technology available on the planet. We'll see you on the next one.